Every great machine has a mind. The Saturn V, that towering symphony of fire and steel, could lift 3,000 tons off the Earth. But without its brain, without the instrument unit, it was just a magnificent bomb. Tucked inside a 36-inch tall ring above the third stage, invisible to the crowds at Cape Kennedy, the instrument unit was the pilot, navigator, and mission controller of the entire rocket. It made decisions in real time, without human input, guiding the Saturn V through the thin atmosphere, through staging, and into orbit. Every Apollo astronaut, from Armstrong to Cernan, rode a rocket flown not by hands, but by code. This is the story of that code, that computer, and the quiet genius that made the moon reachable. From a distance, the instrument unit looked like an ordinary structural ring. But step closer, and it revealed itself as one of the densest concentrations of intelligence ever built in the 1960s. Within that ring were more than 300 separate components, including gyros, accelerometers, telemetry systems, power supplies, and a digital computer. The ring itself was manufactured by Boeing at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama the same place where Werner von Braun's team designed the Saturn V. It was 9 feet high, 21.7 feet in diameter, and weighed about 4,400 pounds. Its outer shell was made of 2219T87 aluminum, the same alloy used for the rocket's propellant tanks, with a honeycomb sandwich structure for stiffness. To the untrained eye, it was simply structure, to NASA engineers, it was the nervous system of a moon rocket. In the early 1960s, engineers at Marshall faced a terrifying truth. No human could fly a rocket as powerful as the Saturn V. The launch sequence involved five F-1 engines producing 7.6 million pounds of thrust, burning 26,000 pounds of propellant per second. Any imbalance in thrust or slight gimbal error would destroy the rocket within seconds. And so autonomy wasn't a luxury, it was survival. Von Braun turned to IBM Federal Systems Division in Huntsville to design a computer and guidance system fast enough, precise enough, and reliable enough to steer a three-stage rocket into a 115-mile parking orbit and then to the moon. The result was the Saturn Launch Vehicle Digital Computer, or LVDC, the brain at the heart of the instrument unit. The LVDC was, by modern standards, primitive. Yet, in 1966, it was a marvel. It could perform about 12,000 instructions per second, operated at 2.048 megahertz, and had 32,768 words of magnetic core memory, each word only 28 bits long. But here's the remarkable part it could continue operating flawlessly even if one of its processing channels failed. It was built with triple modular redundancy, three computers running in parallel, voting every millisecond to confirm their answers. If one channel disagreed, the others outvoted it. This made the system nearly immune to single failures, essential in a vehicle where vibration, heat, and acceleration reached extremes that would shatter most electronics. The LVDC communicated with other subsystems through the data adapter, which interfaced with the guidance platform, 
sensors, and telemetry equipment, a 1960s version of a digital bus. This was no mere calculator. It was a thinking machine, designed for flight precision better than one part in a million. But a computer without orientation is blind. To know where it was, the instrument unit used one of the most sophisticated devices ever flown, the ST-124M inertial platform built by Bendix and Delco under MIT supervision. Suspended inside a set of gimbals, the platform carried three gyroscopes and three accelerometers, each measuring rotation and acceleration along a different axis. Before launch, technicians aligned it with the stars using an optical theodolite at the pad. Once locked, the platform maintained its orientation to the stars, unaffected by the rocket's motion. Every micro-movement of the rocket, pitch, yaw, roll, acceleration, was instantly sensed and fed into the LVDC. It was, quite literally, a floating universe inside the rocket, providing an unbroken sense of up, down, and forward, all the way from the pad to orbit. At T-0, when the F-1 engines roared to life, the instrument unit was already alive, counting milliseconds, comparing sensors, ready to judge the rocket's health. As the Saturn V cleared the tower, the instrument unit controlled every gimbal movement of the engines, keeping the stack straight against high-altitude winds. At 24 miles up, it commanded the roll program, turning the rocket to its proper azimuth for orbital insertion. Two and a half minutes later, when the first stage was nearly empty, the instrument unit sent the stage separation signal. Explosive bolts fired and the five F1s fell away. The S2 second stage ignited, and again, the instrument unit adjusted the new engine gimbling for perfect alignment. Every change in thrust, every oscillation, every slosh of fuel was accounted for. During flight, the instrument unit executed over 5,000 calculations per second, all to maintain one thing, a trajectory precise enough that when the third stage reignited for translunar injection, the spacecraft would hit a target 240,000 miles away and arrive within a few kilometers. Reliability wasn't optional. It was sacred. Every component inside the instrument unit underwent vibration tests, thermal cycling, and vacuum exposure. At IBM Huntsville, entire instrument units were mounted on centrifuges, spun at high acceleration, and bombarded with simulated telemetry noise. Inside the LVDC, each bit of core memory was checked millions of times for integrity. During Apollo 12, the rocket was struck by lightning twice, just seconds after liftoff. The spacecraft's systems went dark, but the instrument unit, shielded and self-contained, stayed online. Its digital vote kept the rocket stable long enough for the crew to reset power and continue the mission. It didn't just guide the rocket, it saved it. Behind the circuitry were people. At IBM Huntsville, engineers like Dr. Charles Chuck Wiggins, Eldon Hall, and Rex Geveden led the effort to translate abstract equations into hardwired logic. At Boeing, hundreds of technicians hand-wired harnesses, more than three miles of cables per unit.
women at the core memory assembly lines threaded magnetic cores one by one, 400,000 of them per computer, each representing a single binary bit. The instrument unit's mind was literally woven by hand. And when each one was completed, it wasn't sent to space right away. It was placed inside the dynamic test stand at Marshall, where an entire Saturn V was shaken to its limits just to prove that its brain would never fail. From Apollo 4 to Apollo 17, every Saturn V carried an instrument unit. Not one ever failed. When the last instrument unit guided its final mission in 1972, it marked the end of an era, the last time a rocket's entire flight depended on an onboard computer designed from scratch, without microprocessors, running purely on magnetic core memory and logic gates. Yet, its legacy is everywhere. In every spacecraft that flies autonomously, in every aircraft that trusts gyroscopes more than horizons, and in every line of code that decides, silently, perfectly, how to guide something through the void. The instrument unit was never meant to be beautiful, but perhaps, in its quiet way, it was the most perfect machine of the Apollo program, the mind that never blinked, the pilot that never panicked, and the reason humanity reached the moon. Today, a few instrument units still survive in museums at Huntsville, Kennedy, and the Smithsonian. Most burned up with the S-4B stages on re-entry. But if you ever see one, a simple aluminum ring, scarred and silent, remember what it once did. Inside that ring once lived the intelligence that guided humanity's greatest leap. And though the rockets are gone, the code that flew them still echoes in every flight computer that came after.